Hey everybody, welcome back to Lost in the Cloud. My name's Jay, um, and today we're gonna to talk a little bit about Azure Cosmos DB, which is a globally distributed multi-model database service. So if you want to put together a database and use uh, APIs that match with uh, several other popular languages that you may be using now, or other types of databases, Cosmos is really the place for you to store your data. If you wanna do anything um, that would provide you uh, single digit uh, multi-second reads, latency uh, at the 99th percentile, you know, this is the right place to go. Um, you won't have to actually host it yourself. You won't have to do any management of the actual database servers and the underlying systems that are associated with it. Um, it's all done for you. Uh, you've got global uh, distribution, uh, limitless and elastic scalability of your reads and writes, uh, low latency at 99th percentile. We've got well-defined consistency choices uh, like multi-master. Um, you'll be able to use enterprise grade performance and security. And you have that multi-model with native support for all these different NoSQL APIs. So if you want to uh, write an application using MongoDB, Cassandra, or even SQL, you'll be able to do that and store all of the data within Cosmos DB. Now, if you go to the Azure Cosmos DB documentation, you're going to find a lot of really easy to use quick starts to get you working with this particular uh, service. Um, as you can see, we've got uh, quick starts for Java, .NET, Node.js, Python, Gremlin, Go, and Xeramin. Um, the one I'm most familiar with really is MongoDB with uh, Node.js, so we'll kick click on that one and here you'll be able to see there's a lot of really useful uh, documentation and ways to actually make use of the service uh, specifically how to build uh, applications using uh, demo apps that they we've provided to you on the docs site um, so really really simple to get started with um, if you want to use this right now we're not going to be actually creating an app what we're going to be doing is going through the cosmos service and showing you how to create a database that eventually you could connect an application to so know that there are uh, plenty of quick starts for you to start using uh, all these different types of uh, application like i said if you want to learn how to build an api web app uh, with mongodb we've got everything uh, with net or Golang, you name it, we've got a lot of options for you to learn with. So make sure you stop by the docs page when you're kind of getting started here and take a look at the different options that are available for you to learn with. All right. So let's move on and take a look at the actual Azure Cosmos DB panel in the portal for Microsoft Azure. So as you can see, I've already got a database created here for one of my subscriptions, and I'm going to create a new one, and I'll show you how to. So um, you can see I've gone ahead and just typed Cosmos, and if you do that here, you'll always, always be able to just find out where the Cosmos service is. So I'll go ahead. You can even see it in the marketplace as well. We'll go there. You'll get a full wizard to create with, and you'll get the information about I would say fully managed, globally distributed multi-model database. So all the, the things that we talked about. Um, and we can go ahead and create it within a new resource group. So let's do that. So what we're going to call this is J video demo. Okay. And that'll be the uh, logical resource group that we're going to be able to keep this in. And now we're going to give this a host name because uh, our, uh, our we're going to have a, a fully qualified domain name for our connection string. Uh, so we'll need a host name, and in this particular case, we will select uh, J Video Demo. Cool, cool. And that was accepted. So now we need to choose an API. We're going to be working with the MongoDB API. Um, we're going to select a location. I like East US. Um, Right now, we don't need geo redundancy, but we can enable it. So we can add global distribution by adding different areas and uh, making sure that our applications available everywhere in the world. And then we can also enable multi-region rights. Uh, that's if we want to have a multi-master type of solution. So let's move forward and click next for our network creation. We can then create a VNet 
So let's click create a virtual network for this and we'll just call it JVideo demo. We'll select a default address space. We'll just give it a default subnet name. We're not going to do anything too crazy here. So we'll click OK. Now we'll go to tags and we'll just give it a name of name and the value of jdemo db uh, net and actually no just the db so jdemo db uh, we don't need this other tag so we're not going to bother to fill it in and next we'll click summary and now we're going to get a summary of uh, the actual creation information and we can Obviously, and, and I say this in almost all of our videos, if we want to, we can download a template for easy creation using the resource manager templates. Um, really, really simple stuff. You can go ahead and download it and it'll uh, give you uh, CLI or .NET or PowerShell commands to actually do these deployments without having to log in to the portal. So we'll just go ahead and click X for now. And what we're gonna do is click create. And so now it's gonna just start creating our deployment. So let's give it a few minutes and then we'll go ahead and wait for our next step. So we're back and after about three minutes and 45 seconds, our database is now created. So let's go to the resource. And as you can see right now, we have J video demo. Uh, there's no collection list because I haven't created any collections yet. So let's add a collection. Ooh, Azure portal access to data is being blocked by your firewall configuration. So let's check that out. So this gives access to our service. Uh, and right now we are only allowed from selected networks and only from address ranges within this particular subnet. So that's not gonna really work for us right now. So let's go back to where that was. And so what I am going to do is add my current IP range so that I'm able to access it from here, which is my computer. Uh, I'm gonna allow access from Azure portals. So that actually gets rid of the need for this because I wanna actually get into it via my Azure control panel. So I'll go ahead and click save. It'll make some changes to the firewall and then we'll be able to go back to here. So this will take a minute and then we'll be able to start taking a look. But one of the things that we'll wanna do, obviously, is take a look at the data explorer, create a database, create a collection, um, and connect. And we can do the connection string stuff, and, and let's take a look. So uh, right now, you're able to see all these uh, connection string information that I have, uh, and, and you're able to look at it. To be honest with you, I don't really care, because I'm gonna delete all this. But this is all very, very important stuff that, uh, to be honest with you, is uh, very, very uh, necessary to actually connect to your database. So uh, based on this information, I can connect via Mongo, lowercase, and what we'll do is Mongo db colon slash slash. So it says the port is 10255, and what I need to do is put in a username so what we will do is put in the username which is j video demo and the password which is this pop it in there and then just put an at symbol okay so let's see why we can't connect right now so my guess is this is probably all due to uh, a network so let's take a look and see what we can do. So firewall and virtual networks. So right now, uh, we haven't allowed my network to connect to this. So let's add my current IP, save. So after I made the change that I needed to to my network firewall, let's go back and just double check it because I had to troubleshoot why I was having an issue connecting, but it was just my reason. So I added my network firewall, but there was one thing I needed to make sure I added to my connection string, which was this dash SSL. And this means that I'm able to actually connect to the, uh, Mo the MongoDB database API over SSL. So let's go ahead and just click that. And hey, now we're connected. Show databases. 
cool. So let's use a demo. And then what we can do is then go over and I guess DB. Let's create a basic create basic single document ID. So I don't remember off the top of my head, which is not a big deal, but let's just insert a basic document. So cool, we'll grab this. Cool. Show collections. Inventory, DB inventory, find. If you want to make it pretty, you do it that way. And now we can go back here and we can take a look at the data explorer. We'll look at the MongoDB API. We'll refresh this. There's demo, there's inventory, and there's our documents. Canvas, canvas. So there's the document we just created, and that's how easy it is to get started using um, the Cosmos DB database service. Um, you've got a lot of other things that you can do. If you want to start replicating the data globally, you can select additional regions that you want to have this in. So I can go ahead and say I want to have it replicated in West Europe also, and, and that's it. You save it, and the data is re replicated. There's no need for you to go in and make any changes to any configurations. Uh, you'll just need to have to update your application to make sure that these new regions are um, mentioned in your connection string. So I believe if you just go back to connection string, you should have all the potential, yep, global DB, you should have all the uh, new endpoints within these additional, uh, in these uh, connection strings, because it should be just connected to an array that's going to connect you to all the instances that are associated with your Azure uh, document DB. If you want to scale out, there are options to scale. Uh, just look through the documentation on what the estimated spend is, the writes and reads, all the information that are associated with scale and settings. Um, there's tons and tons of documentation for you to look for. Um, and if you want to do anything as far as locks, um, take a look at preview features, uh, like the aggregation pipeline, which is a huge part of MongoDB. Um, all you have to do is click enable. Oh, oh we have to wait until our lock uh, for our last change is removed. But once our uh, lock for our replication is done, I can go ahead and enable the 3 4 wire protocol or the aggregation pipeline. So if I want to do any deep questions on our, my data uh, and do some real big aggregations on the server side, I can. And I won't need to have to uh, bring it over and then write additional code in my uh, client to do some aggregation. So uh, that's, that's really it. That's how we can get started. Um, and there's, there's tons of things as far as IAM control to create additional users so that you can have access uh, to all these, um, especially if you want to have third-party services uh, looking at what your database is doing. Uh, and there you go. So uh, that's all. If you have more questions about uh, Azure Database, like I said, come over to the uh, Azure Cosmos DB documentation. Take a look at everything that there is for you. Um, if you have any questions for me, you can go to my Twitter account, as always. Um, it's Halloween, so I'm dead J right now, but you can go to at JDestro on Twitter, and you can find me at any time. Uh, so that's really it for this time at Lost in the Cloud. Thanks a lot, and good luck working with Microsoft Azure and uh, Microsoft uh, Cosmos DB. Thanks. Bye.